Good morning. Welcome to our morning devotions this morning. I'm coming to you from my office here at Center Baptist Church. I uh, got here early this morning, got some work I want to uh, get knocked out this morning. And then uh, today is uh, mine and Miss Courtney's 24th wedding anniversary. So I want to spend some time with her. So I came in early this morning to get some things knocked out. And I uh, just want to uh, thank you for joining in. So uh, this morning we finished up in the book of Jonah on Friday and really sensed in my heart God leading me. Again, these morning devotions are the things that God is stirring in my heart. So um, we're going to be looking at the book of Colossians. The New Testament, go to the book of Colossians. So good morning to everybody. Thank you for joining in. Please do leave a comment. I want to come back and say hello to you. And uh, thank you for those. Yes, happy anniversary. Thank you. Miss Courtney is a good woman to be able to put up with me for 24 years. Um, but really and truly, I am blessed beyond measure. And I am honored um, that God would put someone like Miss Courtney in my life. And so we're going to dive in this morning here in the book of Colossians. Colossians. I um, want to warn you, I um, I told Courtney, we were talking about this weekend, when I go through a book personally, and even when I teach it, I usually go pretty slow. You know how long it took us to go through four chapters of Jonah and even of Ruth. But I want to walk through Colossians slowly from my own heart. And uh, so we're going to dive in. Colossians chapter 1 is where God's been speaking to me. And so, again, thank you for joining in. Good morning to everybody, and thank you for all those already uh, sharing happy anniversary. Thank you. God bless you. Let's pray together, okay? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the way you speak to us. Thank you for this great letter that Paul wrote to the church at Colossae. Even in the short time that I've been digging in it this weekend and even this morning, it is already speaking to my heart. Help me to live out these truths, but also to share these truths with those that have gathered this morning. I am humbled and grateful to those that join in these morning devotions. Father, thank you. Many join us now and then will join later um, throughout the day and even those that would join on YouTube and we're grateful. Thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy. Help us now as we dig into your word, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, good morning again. If you joined us late, we're in Colossians chapter one. To kind of always like to kind of tell you where we've landed when I come when we come to God's word, okay? And so we come here to the book of Colossians, and each of these books are actually letters, okay? Be reminded that they didn't have email, phones, uh, the communication system that we have today. So letters were valuable. Letters were something very personal. And Paul wrote many letters while he was in prison. Paul, the great missionary, we see it through the book of Acts, was called by God to go to the Gentiles. He ended up there towards the latter part of Acts. He's arrested in Jerusalem. He, Paul, also being a Roman citizen um, through his father, he appealed to Caesar, and so therefore he, he goes to Rome. While he's there under house arrest, he writes letters to some of the churches that he had visited and started. However, the church at Colossae was about 100 miles away from Ephesus, one of Paul's great letters and where he spent a lot of time, over a year and a half, preaching the gospel. It's believed Paul never visited this city of Colossae. However, there were those that had gotten saved out of the revival at Ephesus and had went back and established a church. One of those men was Epaphras, Epaphras made his way to Rome to pour his heart out to Paul because he was worried about his own church. 
there were a young church and they were being led astray by heresy, a false teaching that was pulling them away from Jesus. And Epaphras poured his heart out to Paul. Paul then writes this letter to the church at Colossae. And Epaphras will take it back along with Tychicus and they will take this letter. So as we're reading this, know it was written to a group of people who were about a 100 miles from um, Ephesus. It at one time had been a strong city, but it was on the downward decline. And it was a young church in the midst of this city that was being led astray. And Paul, writing this letter, wants to point them. The theme of, uh, of, the, of the book of, of Colossians is the supremacy of Christ. Here's the thing that Paul wanted to do. He wanted to get the church at Colossae's focus back on the Lord, back on the Lord Jesus Christ. This entire book will focus us in on the person of Jesus. Now, let me tell you why God spoke this into my heart to study this book personally and then to share it with you. We're living in a world just like the church at Colossae was living in where people will say a couple things. Hey, Jesus is great but he's not the only way to heaven. What you believe is wonderful, but it's not what I believe. And as long as we're believing something, we're okay. It's Jesus plus baptism, Jesus plus good living, Jesus plus social justice, Jesus plus social ministry, Jesus plus being a good person. Paul will write in this great letter to the church at Colossae and say, it is Jesus only. He is the only way to heaven. But now here's the second thing that he would say to them. If you want to know something's false, don't study the false thing. Did you know that when um, people that will study counterfeit, they do not study counterfeit money. They study the genuine article. They know the genuine article of the of money so backwards and forwards, the intricities of every part, so they can easily spot the false one. So Paul is saying, let's not focus and study on the false doctrine. Let's focus on Jesus. And the more I know about Jesus, the more I'm able to say, wait a minute, that's not true. That's not right. So Colossians are going to teach us more and more about Jesus. But here's the the thing that really God's stirring in me about this book of focusing on Jesus. I've been distracted. Have you? (laughs) With all the stuff going on in the world, I've been distracted by the pandemic. I've been distracted by the unrest. I've been distracted by the news cycle, my own thoughts and feelings and frustrations. Paul is saying to the church at Colossae, don't get distracted Place your eyes on Jesus. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to read the first two verses. Read with me. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul lets us know right off the bat that he's the one writing this letter. He's an apostle. Why is that important? An apostle simply means one sent from God, okay? It means to be set apart. Now, there were those that were known as apostles. It carried weight and authority. Epaphras, when he came to Rome, he knew that he did not have the weight or the authority to stand against the false doctrine and the heresy that was taking place at Colossae. And so he appealed to Paul, and Paul then writes this letter saying, with the authority given to me by God, I want to point you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we know now that that apostleship there with Paul and the other disciples, that was the foundation of the church. If somebody comes up to you today and says, hey, I'm apostle such and such, I'm sorry. They may want to have that title, but they don't care the authority and weight of these men to have seen the person of Jesus physically resurrected. Now, Paul didn't there as the disciples did a few days after the resurrection, 
but he did see Jesus on the road to Damascus in full glory when he came to Paul. So Paul carried the full weight of the apostleship. But Paul said, by the will of God. I love that. I, I, I really studied that in my own heart this morning. It means that God put him in that place. God had a calling on his life. I want you to know and be reminded, God has a will for you. And God has a purpose for you. So many people say, I just want to know what my purpose is in life. Can I say something to you? Love Jesus, love others. Love Jesus, love others. Seek to honor him and honor others. And in your daily life, if you'll love Jesus and you'll love others and whatever that looks like, you will live out your purpose every day. God has a will for you. Then he goes on to say, in Timothy, our brother. That's Timothy. It was somebody that Paul was pouring into. And we know about Timothy from the letters that Paul would write to him. He was a son in the ministry he was a partner. Paul never did ministry alone. But I want to dig into the second verse. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. So he's riding to the church at Colossae, and he says something to the saints. When you hear the word saint, what comes to your mind? Statue? Stained glass? Maybe here in our area, we would say, well, I'm telling you, they are a saint of God. We're talking about somebody that maybe is is really uh, reached a level of maturity and and man, they have made an impact in in their society. With with other religions, it would be to to reach a place of sainthood, to have a statue and be in stained glass and reach a level of spirituality. That's not true. The word saint simply means set apart by God. Guess what? If you're saved by God's grace, you're a saint. The Bible says the saints of God. You say, well, I'm not perfect. Listen, neither am I. It speaks to my standing before God. Now, I want to share something with you that was taught to me early on in my preaching and pastoring ministry. We have our standing in our state. Our standing is who we are in Christ. The moment of salvation, we received all of Jesus. And there's our state that daily we we, we live in this life and we, we make mistakes and we fall short and we seek forgiveness and we walk before Jesus by grace and in faith, but our standing never changes. I'm going to heaven because I've been saved by God's amazing grace. I am a saint. I am standing on the promises of God. I am standing on the Lord Jesus Christ. When I get to heaven and, the, and God was to say, Michael, why should I let you in? It will not be because I say I was a preacher, because I read your word, studied your word, preached your word, because I tried to help the Lord. Lord that's not it. I'm going to say I, I'm only here today because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I placed my faith and trust in him, and he saved my soul. I'm coming, as, as, as the writer says, that Jesus brings us to God. It literally means we're grabbing hold of his coattails. I'm not getting to heaven on the coattails of anybody else but Jesus. He's the one, and I am a saint. Your wife, your husband, your coworker say, what are you smiling about today? I just found out I'm a saint. <laughs> but really and truly, we are children of God. But now it goes on to say, and faithful brethren, faithful. Uh, that word has just meant so much to me in recent days. We're trying to figure out what this life looks like now and ministry and life. God keeps just pressing that word in. Just be faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? I wrote down some definitions. To be steadfast. To, um, to be full of faith. It, it means to be diligent. It means to be true to the original. Remember what we're talking about? The original? To be true to the original. It means to stay close to Jesus, to live for Jesus, and to live like Jesus, to be faithful. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but it's faithfulness, steadfastness. Paul was encouraging and saying, now listen, I know there's a heresy coming around. He's going to really talk about 
and, and really pointing them to Jesus. But he wanted right off the bat to say, I want to say thank God for those of you that are being faithful. Can I just say a word of encouragement? Thank you for those of you that are being faithful. Thank you for being faithful to God's word. Thank you for those who've been faithful to come on side and, and we're learning God's word together. And I'm praying that you're growing as God's trying to help me to grow. But can I just encourage you, stay by the stuff. Stay by the Bible. Stay by prayer. Stay in that family. Stay in that ministry. Be faithful. At the end of the day, it's not success that God looks at. It's faithfulness. It's commended to the steward to be faithful. The faithful brethren, I like that good Bible word, brethren. It speaks of the family of God. Did you know Paul was a Jew and the people at Colossae were from the Asian European descent? That means they were different nationality, a different ethnicity. So much is being said about all this, but let me just simply say this. When we come in Christ as the body of Christ, it's, it, does, it is not about ethnicity. It is not about where we come. Where it, we are all one brother and sister in the body of Christ. Amen. Paul says, I've got brethren that are of other descents, of other ethnicities. I've got, listen, there are people all over this world that I've never met. Paul had never met them. How can he call them brothers? Because we are one family in the body of Christ. I thank God for my brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world who are facing persecution, who are standing strong, that we're not in this thing by ourselves. That listen, some of you I haven't seen in a while. Some of you, it's been a while since I've visibly seen you, but we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Aren't you grateful for the church? Y'all see how come it takes me a long time to get through a book? Good, not a mighty. But here's what I want you to see that, that as I was reading and studying this morning, jumped out. To the faithful brother in Christ, which are at Colossae. In Christ, who are at Colossae. Warren Wiersbe said there's two locations every Christian has. A spiritual location and a physical location. He said, for the saints and brethren who were in Christ at Colossae. Would you, would you think about it this way? Michael Wilkes, who is in Christ at Robertstown. Michael Wilkes, who is in Christ at Cleveland, Georgia. Where you, you name where you're from and think about it. I'm in Christ, but I'm at the city community that I live in. The term in Christ is my spiritual location. It means that I'm in a relationship with Jesus. It means that he is my Savior and Lord. It means that my life is to revolve around him, that I'm in him and he is in me, and that the sphere of my life is to be, be surrounded by Jesus and how I live and how I talk and how I act and how I give and how I think needs to be in Christ, and I'm in him. Nothing can change that. The moment that I got saved, I became to be in Christ, in a relationship with him. I am bonded to him. I'm in a union with him that he is in me and I am in him. But then he places me in a physical location. Paul said, I want you at the church Colossae to know that you are in Christ, but you're in Colossae and at Colossae for a reason. God has you not only in him, but he has you at where you are for a reason and for a season. We've lived in Sardis. We've, I've lived in Skitch Mountain. We, we've lived in such as Georgia. Now we live in Cleveland, Georgia. And each time, in each place, God had me there for a reason, just like he has you where he has you. You ever thought about when God saved us, why he don't just call us on to heaven? Because he wants to use us in this place to point others to him, to point others to the mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be an encouragement to others. Let me ask you a question. Here's what happens, though. 
sometimes we get so wrapped up in the in Christ, we forget we're also in a city. And that, listen, to be in Christ doesn't mean you pull yourself away and you isolate yourself and you don't become a part of the community. You don't go to work. You don't go to school. You don't interact. You don't go to restaurants. You don't go to the grocery store. You don't do, you know, that's not what it means. See, because where I'm in Christ, wherever I go, I'm in Christ. But some people so isolate themselves They get so wrapped up in the mysticism of it, they forget that he's also placed them. But some people get so wrapped up in where they're at, they forget they're in Christ. They forget that when they're at the ball field, they're in Christ. When they're at at the restaurant, they're in Christ. They're building their their, um, portfolio. They're building their business. They're doing all these things. Paul would say to us, we must be in both. Work, serve, do those things. Have fun with your family. Go to the ball games. Go to the ballparks. Do those things. But know and be reminded you're also in Christ. Right off the bat, Paul is pointing them to the supremacy and the priority and the focus of Jesus. Here's a question. I wrote my notes for me. Michael, where's your focus? Now, I've got to be honest. I've let my focus go in different directions at times. If I'm not careful, I can get focused on the bad, the ugly, the frustrating. I can worry about the future, anxiety. I can let myself get wrapped up in those stresses, and I can lose my focus. For me, God's pointing me in this book to say, Michael, get your focus back on me. By the way, you know you hit what you aim at, right? If you're aiming, now, you know, I, I know some folks, if we're throwing a ball, it may go away, but but what what is what are we aiming at? Are we aiming at Jesus? Are we aiming at the stuff? And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things that we need to be burdened about, but my primary focus must be on Jesus. I want to read you something David Jeremiah said in his study Bible that I put down in my notes. And I want to close with this. I want you to listen closely. This is David Jeremiah from his study Bible that I, that I used this morning. When life gets confusing, wow, that's been for me, it's been a confusing season. And some of the goals and convictions become fuzzy. Push aside the nagging worries and the lesser thoughts and lock your gaze on God's Son. The more we focus on Jesus, the more we become like Him. When life gets confusing and goals and convictions become fuzzy, push aside the nagging worries and the lesser thoughts, and lock our gaze on Jesus. <laughs> that's who we. That's who saved us. That's who loves us. That's who keeps us. That's who guides us. That's who directs us. He is all in all. <laughs> and Paul's going to say in this book, to him have the preeminence and the glory and the honor. Be reminded today you were in Christ at wherever you are. But aren't we thankful for Jesus? And Paul says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray the same for you today. I'm excited for this study. I can't promise you that we'll go very far each day, but we're going to walk through it as God speaks to me. I'll share it with you. I want to say again, thank you for joining in. Hey, comment, leave a comment with me so I can come back and say hello. Thank you for those who have already shared anniversary blessings. I am blessed beyond measure to celebrate 24 years of marriage with Miss Courtney. And uh, thank you for joining on today. 
God bless you. I mean, you are an encourager to this pastor. Can I encourage you to share this with others? In a very confusing time in our nation and our world, we need to point them to Jesus. And I pray this study is going to do that. So I encourage you to share this today with others. But also let it, God help us to let it live in our heart. God bless you, Brother Jim. Thank you. Let me pray for us. And listen, if you've got a prayer need, share it with me here. Message me. Um, go to our website, centerbaptist.com. And there's a link there, Connect Center. Hit that. It'll take you to a prayer card. I would love to pray with you and to join you in prayer about anything going on in your life. So pray with me now and pray God gives you a good day. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you for the supremacy of Christ. And in a world that's got confusing and fuzzy and and Lord, help us to, as David Jeremiah said, to push aside nagging worries and lesser thoughts and lock our gaze on you. Thank you for saving me. I pray everyone that joins in is saved, but if they're not, that they'll be saved today and trust you as their Savior so that we can be in you where we are. God, today in our spiritual location, may we be saved. And if we are saved, thank you for that. But then God help us in our physical location to impact by our spiritual location. And I thank you. Bless every person that is joined on or will join later. God bless them today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you again. Uh, may the Lord encourage you. May the Lord bless you today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at seven o'clock and I pray you have a wonderful day. God bless you is my prayer.